Oh, hey. Uh, things, stuff, Sada Station Podcast. Oh, hey, welcome to the 131st episode of the Sada Station Podcast with your hosts, myself, Nat from Nap Snotty Works LLC, Josh from North Country Woodworking, Nick from MPG Creations, and returning special guest, Joey from Steel Blade Woodworks. Uh, how you guys doing? This is the last freaking episode of the year. Like, that's kind of crazy to say. You know, it's no more Christmas month going into the new year. A little weird. Time flies. It Don't feel like it's been a year. Sure did. But uh, before we get into, like, how we're going to end this year and what we're going to do in this new year, start with Joey. Let's talk about what's going on in your shop. I mean, you got a printer farm behind you. <laughs> that thing is uh, pretty cool looking. Yeah, we've been uh, been doing a little work. Uh, got, the, got the 3D printer farm going. I've got some other 3D printers, so we've been making some prototypes and getting ready to hopefully uh, get the website going this coming year and still working on putting that shop together, that shop that been going ongoing project out there. So been kind of doing that and playing around in here with the laser and the 3d printers and uh, yeah, not a, not a whole heck of a lot other than just that going on. Uh, the shop seems to be coming together to well pretty pretty good, though. I mean, it looks like you're making huge strides. Like, you'll take on a project and then, oh, here's a whole chunk of the shop done. Yeah, yeah. We've. I mean, during my vacation here recently, I pretty much got that other work uh, or storage pop, counter, whatever you want to call it, done. And actually came up with an idea to use the... Uh, Harbor Freight tables, instead of building something, I they went on sale, so I went and purchased six of them, <laughs> put them all together, and made a massive workstation uh, in front of there. It's just an idea because there's going to be some ongoing storage to like store all my sustainers and stuff in there. And, and I mm-hmm. actually kind of, there's going to be a video coming out on that, how I actually kind of redid the drawers on those tables and added more to some tables. Just it's kind of just going to go with the whole concept of what I'm going to do and how I'm going to rearrange all that in there and, and make it work. And um, it was just a quick, easy solution instead of trying to build something. In my head, that was just quick and easy because I'm I need to get moving with that build and get it finished. If you know what I mean. And instead of wasting a whole yeah. lot of time on that part. I, I I went that route, you know. So, yeah, we got that done. Um, and those are like a bunch of videos that I still have not edited and put it out, put them out on uh, YouTube. But hopefully the, I will get on the ball and start rolling those out in the coming year. Uh, but for now, just kind of taking it easy on this last week and, and just relaxing a little bit. Uh, work's been a little crazy itself so not uh don't really feel like coming into the shop and doing stuff after work y'all y'all probably know how that is well i can level uh, with you 100 <laughs> percent. so yeah we you know just like you know probably a lot of places during the holidays people go on vacation and you know you're left to fend for yourself and this makes it for a harder day and really not uh not feeling it. Okay. So yeah, I mean, that's uh really, really, I mean, we just gearing up, added some more, more tools and I guess that'll be talked in later about it, but added some cool stuff to the shop, getting ready to, you know, to carry on on the next steps of the build, hopefully uh, in the, in the coming year and start getting some of the bigger equipment set up and get dust collection ready to go, all that good stuff. Cause I really want to try to knock this out pretty, at least this year, get it done to where I can start utilizing those, those bigger pieces of equipment and not just, you know, using, you know, I've got table saws and track saws are fine, but just sometimes it's a lot easier to put it in table saw, Absolutely. you know, and I really want to get those going and I've been needing to use a band saw. I still haven't wired that up. So we'll hopefully get that going. And get all that stuff ready and 
to rock and roll. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Hi, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Man, every time we have you on here, going down a different path. I think the last time we uh, had you on here, you were doing leather, getting back into that. And now it's all about the 3D printers um, in the farm. And shooting porn. Yeah. We'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> That's in the new studio. <laughs> Who's got a couch in there? <laughs> yeah, we, we we added an addition upstairs. It's a futon. <laughs> That's yeah. going to... That's going to be the quiet room up there. <laughs> quiet room. But your 3D printer's in the back of you. Now, I've never heard of those. You know, I don't know everything about 3D printing, but I like to, you know, how do you find them? Like, how are they printing? Obviously, you like them. You have quite a few. Let's talk about 3D printing a little bit. Okay, so uh, a friend actually mentioned them. They're from actually from the UK, and they were talking about it because... I've had the, what is that? The uh, Ender Pro. I can't think of the dang name. The Dremel. Oh, okay. I started with the Dremel, and I've had that for years, and I was using it, and it's just an old printer. And I think I had talked to you about it one time, yeah. and you, you know, asking that my, you know, stuff was coming unglued, and you said, "Well, use that stick glue," and I tried that, and it was good, but. I wanted to move up to something better, you know, a uh, heated bed, that kind of stuff. So I started looking into it and they mentioned JG maker. It had a full IDEX printer, you know? So when I started looking into it, that was the first printer that I bought was the artist D pro, which is a dual head IDEX printer, um, big platform. And I started using it and I really liked it, uh, printed well. And, then I moved in, these A5Ss came out, and I bought a couple of them, and I started printing with them, and they were actually have almost the same size build plate. Um, all the, you know, uh, touchscreen, heated bed, you know, all that good stuff, right? So I took a chance and bought two of them, and they printed well. I was like, wow, it's pretty good. Um and then they went on sale and I bought more. And then I ended up with what you see now, six of them sitting there. And uh, I've I've always wanted to try to build things for my shop, right? Like as I'm building it out, I, find, I come across things that I may need like little hanging devices or whatever. So that kind of really got me thinking and I'm like, well, I can actually add these as I'm designing them and building them. I can put these out to sell if I think that they're good enough for somebody else to utilize in their shop. So that's where the thinking came in. Let me get more. I'll get ramped up as I'm designing these things. If they're good, then I will actually print them and make and sell them mm -hmm. just like you see quite a few people doing. And um, that's why I came up with that. And I really like messing with them. I like the designing part and, making you know trying to come up with something unique um that i can use in the shop whether it's for dust collection or hanging a tool or whatever it may be right so i've come i mean i've come up with a few things that i like and uh they're going to be utilized in my shop that i'm also going to offer for the uh woodworking community to purchase you know once once i could get my website going um i've got a few that I'm real comfortable with that I know that will work. Like, I mean, for instance, we, I came up with this, of course I went with Festool. So I designed this holder for the six inch sander. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that I'm going to put out there. Uh, this one, this has worked very well and I like it. So this will be put out. Um, and of course, other so things that me, you've seen. Is Festool better than every other brand? I, is Festool better than every other brand? Yeah. I mean, I, I guess it's a personal preference here, but I know you're not going to drag uh, me into that. <laughs> Smart <laughs> man. Like, like I, I felt, I heard it in his voice. I'm like, oh, he, he's playing, he's playing games today. I yeah. was just wondering because, you know, like people, people don't get upset about it or anything. So, <laughs> not at yeah. all. Uh -huh. <laughs> we. We've had a we've had a few conversations on the lives about Festo, and some people get really aggravated about it. But you know, 
it's like get what you want to get and use you know <laughs> so you know rubio monocoat or die okay just throw it out yeah. there <laughs> So we've come up with a few things and my latest one is this one that I really like. This is this is going to be a magnetic attachment for dust collection and I designed this and it came up so this will be to where you can attach different uh to different pieces of machinery. So this was designed to fit the sewer pipe and which a lot of people use on dust collection. Mm -hmm. So if where you can actually put this in, the concept was you can attach a spiral hose to this in and kind of be like the dust right uh, attachment where you can make your own, but it's it's magnetic and this will be, you can move it around to other pieces of, of, of machinery. Like if you're just running a single stage dust collector and you're running a long hose and attaching, well, that's where this is going to come into play. And then I'll modify this down to work with shop backs and stuff like that. So... Um, I'm still working on that, trying to get it refined and, and going. That was my first print on that. So, yeah, we that's kind of the along the lines that I've I've uh, gone with, and I've become affiliated with this company now. So, uh, so which is pretty cool. I mean, they're like I tell everybody that asks me about 3D printing, I said you need to have patience. These aren't auto level. You need to you need to have patience with the 3D printer. Um, I put a kind of a the things that I've gone through with these printers. What I found works best as far as leveling them, how to level them, um, and I have good results every time. I had a misprint on the I misprinted once on these printers, and it was really my fault because I seen it and I let it go, and I was like, ah, it'll probably work, and it didn't. Right? It messed up created a big old rat's nest and it was all my fault i should have stopped it when i seen it but i was just like eh i let it go and ended up messing up but i've i've found using these a lot the best ways to to level them is heat everything up when you're leveling mm -hmm. them because everything expands don't level them cold level them hot and and go ahead and just once you're done leveling purge it i always purge them and I have no problems with them. You hear a bunch of horror stories out there of people not being able to print and having problems. And I'm like, you know, uh, most of the time I think it's just user error, not, not following the steps and doing it properly because I haven't had any issues. I've had one, uh, an extruder head mess up on me again, user error. I nose dived it into the bed and it was my own fault for doing that. And I messed the nozzle up and messed some other stuff up, had to fix it and, and it's working fine now, but um, I, I mean, you know, like I said, they've been working very well. And I've, uh, the longest I've ran these things today now is probably like almost four days straight mm -hmm. as they were printing, they were just going and I'd take the prints off, clean the bed without, I use uh, rubbing alcohol, mm -hmm. I clean the bed off cause those are glass build plates and I'll clean them off and hit go again. Usually if you don't mess with the bed too much, those prints, they'll pop off real quick. I'll clean, hit go, and just let it, watch it, make sure it starts off fine, and then just leave it alone, and they'll print fine. So I've used them. I've ran them quite a bit, and they've worked very well, um, you know. So so with, uh, with printing on the 3D printer, is that a question? So you know how, like, on, like, CNCs and lasers and stuff, how we are we dread the startup? Because if you, let's say, mess something up, like let's say you don't put your um, start point in the bottom left corner, but rather in the middle, or you have an offset for some random reason, which I've had happen before, uh, actually kind of scared stuff out of me. Um, with 3D printing, is it just as violent as if no, you crash well, like a CNC or a laser? No, the when you crash the head, it's because you didn't level it right. And, and it's going to... What I found out is when you finish leveling, I always home everything. So even though I home, I home it before I start leveling, get everything hot, level it, and then I home it again. And um, I miss those steps. I was just in a hurry. 
and that's what nosedived that head straight. It it didn't have, I guess it's lost kind of like it's homing, and it went actually further down and scraped that glass plate and, and messed the nozzle up. But as long as you put, wherever you put it in the slicing software and it makes that G-code, the placement of that print that you're going to print is how it's going to be placed on that build plate. So if you see that, so I know people probably are not going to see this because, you know, we're, 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 we're all in here, but that computer there, that slicing software is actually the same size build plate as that A5S. So when you, when you open that slicing software, you pick that model of printer and all those parameters are built mm -hmm. in. So it pretty much tells it, it knows where it's going to go. So as long as it's leveled correctly, you're not going to have any problems other than the filament not feeding correctly. I like that you picked up on okay. the uh, the heating of the actual bed in the nozzle before you level, because that's one thing I didn't know about when I had the Ender Pro. And when I got the Prusa, I noticed that it would always heat up to 170 degrees and always heat the bed to whatever filament that you're going about to use. So PLA, about 60, ABS, it's about 100 and it would do its auto leveling that way. And, you know, through that, I learned it that way. But it's awesome that you picked it up. Um, and anyone listening to 3D prints, if you're having troubles, that's that's a good way to go about it. Um, especially making sure the bed is heating up to the filament you're about to use um, because of the expansion. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm glad that those 3D printers are coming out great for you. <laughs> I love the farm behind you. I, I keep trying to get another 3D printer, but the wife says, uh, as is, I have too many. So uh, maybe when we get a bigger house. So Yeah, they're, they, uh, they actually, and the reason I ended up with that, because they actually ran a sale. And when they ran a sale, there was a buy one, get one. Oh, wow. So they, they put them on sale for $299 buy one get one so i bought two and mistakes then i sat there and i used, part. what's that some mistakes were made on their part <laughs> yeah because i used the two and they printed very well and i was like oh, you know what i went back on the website and they were still two for one so i bought another two and put them to use and started working on them and then it was like a couple of weeks later i just jumped on there i was looking at my affiliate back just office curious. and everything and they were still on sale again. And I said, you know what? I guess I'll get another. That's two. that's awesome. Man. And that's, you know, so that's how I ended up with so many. Because, I mean, if regular price, yeah, that wouldn't have happened. Because it would have been a big investment. I'd had to do it little by little. But since they were at that price, it was too hard to, you know, too hard to, to pass up. Will you invest in a, in a printer that's much larger than that eventually? I mean, think, for, for right now, bigger? if I need to, like, if I'm going to do something real big, I have that Artisty Pro, which is just slightly bigger than this, you know? Um, but I don't foresee everything that I'm doing is fairly small. If it's something that big, I mean, who knows in the future what will happen. Uh, you could also slice If it I'll out. need anything that big. You can slice it yeah, out and then, I mean, you know, you can, fasten it together. Right, hey, right. Uh, so, so there's uh, ways around it, you know. But uh, Joey, yeah. when are you coming up here, man? I don't know, Nick. <clears throat> I gotta make some time. To... Why? What you need? I'm. Oh, uh, uh, they opened a new Rockler, man. I know. I need to go, and I had told my wife because I thought it was gonna open while I was on vacation, and then we just got. I was sick for the first week, and then the second week, well. It was just getting ready for Christmas and stuff, and that kind of got thrown out the door. But I want to get up there and go check it out. You know, I pulled up on that place, man. They opened the doors and it was straight <laughs> all the way up in there, man. I was all over. <laughs> you nickified it. It huh? was like it looked like Black Friday, but with just me bum rushing the door. <laughs> Dude, that place is nice, man. I I went into the one in Houston, and I could have probably spent two days in there. 
if I'd have had the time. In the money. Dude. It, it, there, like a fat kid in a candy store. In there, boy. <laughs> there is so much stuff to look at. I know. And I stay away from the lumber, though, because mm-hmm. uh, that'll run you to the poorhouse. Yeah. And, I, but, I, I mean, it's take good it. lumber. Yeah. But it's expensive lumber. Very. <laughs> it's real expensive. <laughs> you can go 10 well, miles know. down the road. Just know if you go up to San, you know, go up, down, whatever, to San Antonio, um, you got to go to Dakota Hardwoods too. Get yourself some, uh, some, some better, cheaper lumber. Bring a trailer. You know, you know, Naps. That was the whole plan because I told my wife. I said, I'm going to hook the trailer up, and we're going to go to San Antonio, and we're going to go get some wood. And at the same time, I was going to, if the Rockler, I didn't, I went. When did that Rockler open, Nick? The fifteenth. So a day a day after my birthday, which was I figured that I was like, man, we'll go up there and I'll kill two birds with one stone. Um, but it didn't happen. Life happened and couldn't make it. Couldn't make it. So they got a lot of good stuff in stock too. At least you guys can go to Dakota Hardwoods. I'm still up here in the far north where the place called North Dakota does not have. Uh, Dakota Hardwoods. I don't understand this. It makes no damn sense. At least you guys got to experience that at some point in time. I've been getting chipped since I started. <laughs> I don't know what it might He's like, I don't know what it's like to sir, feel good. I have Let me some more wood. Speak to me. <laughs> Every time I go, I cry a little there's bit. A, there's, a, there's a rockler in uh, uh, Morristown. There is, there? but again... A rockler or, you know, any type of woodworking store like that, when you get lumber, it's going to cost you. Um, Diamond Lumber down here has gotten better, I will say, since I first went there. Um, But it's still some pricey material. Like the other day, I got five pieces of walnut, five boards, and I paid like almost 600 bucks. Well, what? Yeah. Eight quarter? No. Four quarter. And it was... What the S two S? What? Oh, did you sell a kidney? Well, there were different size boards. Uh, there, I mean, they went from eight to twelve foot. Um, I had a couple eight inches, uh, eight, yeah, eights, and then uh, twelve. Uh, but hey, calm, calm down there. I, I'm not even the one with the mustache. No, 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 no. I guarantee you, my walnuts more expensive, and I don't spend that effing much I'm money. I'm telling you. It, they're Someone's really good. it is expensive here. It is not cheap. It's eighteen dollars yeah, here. It's nineteen something here. Oh, oh well, it's twenty soul. something here. One dollar. No, yeah, it's we not. know it's not. I don't know what you're playing. <laughs> yeah, I know it's not. It's like oh. eight dot. It's like eight dollars where you're at. You freaking. When I, I, that's what I like. <laughs> when you guys are like, oh, you know, you know, it's expensive. Like, oh yeah. You, I start walking sideways when I leave there. I just got. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it's 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 pricey, and it it's gotten worse, obviously, with the market and everything. But uh, oh, yeah, when especially like I'm doing that, I'm doing that trunk. Uh, I'll get into my stuff here sometime soon. But it's just when you when you yeah, get yeah. into buying, because I would love to get a whole bunch of lumber, throw it on the rack in there, but I just I can't afford it. You know, I mean, cherry isn't so bad, maple's a little better, but I mean, walnut, walnut is definitely a uh, They'll price gouge you. Yeah, mm. I'm probably not buying walnut for a very long time because I haven't used much of it. So, cherry pretty cheap here. Cherry, it's honestly not cheap. cheaper than construction lumber. Whoa, yes. that's yeah. Pretty, that's. Anyways, we'll come back to that. Anywho, let's put it this way: if I was to go to Home Depot and buy like three quarter inch, the what do they call it? The the really nice grade pine. Uh, select. Oh, select select premium pine. Select select premium pine. The it's stuff premium. that mm. yeah, I would pay more per board than I would if I go to Dakota and buy uh, thirteen sixteenths S two S. And I'm not bragging. I'm just saying. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm, I ain't gonna lie, man. I missed that, but I'll talk more on wood here shortly. Man, that's just painful to hear. Joe, 
really painful. So continue on with your chlorophyll. I mean, your trailer, and then it not happening, life happening, all the things. So it sounds like you got to make a date with Nick soon with lit candles, a nice dinner, and a lot of wood. Yeah, the last time I went up there, he was – I went up there and picked some sanders up from Woodcraft, and I called him, and he, we just couldn't make it happen. He was busy. So. I think I was watching the boys. Yeah, you were. I think that's what it was. You had the kids or something like that. So No excuse. Man, you would like, you would have been like, I'm never meeting him again <laughs> if I'd have brought my kids up there. No, no. No, no, no. I, I've got some – I've got some heathens too, so don't worry about it. Even older, they're heathens. <laughs> I don't think it ever changes. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Did you ask Joey what he got for Christmas? Did anybody? Not yet. I was gonna. We we kind of got derailed off of wood. Yeah, there's a couple of things. It's been a while since I got to talk to Joey. It seems like uh, we haven't talked in a minute, so I had a whole mess of questions for him. Um, one including reels versus posts. Versus lives. Your opinion, sir. Okay. So I think reels are just, I mean, put them out there, but they're not even, I mean, for my, for, for myself, my, my channel, they're not doing very well. It takes them a little bit to get any views. They're not like it used to be, mm-hmm. um, which I think, and maybe it's a good thing because now they're more, they're pushing them more to people that, or to, um, to the same group, like to the woodworking community, to the audience. It, I don't see these reels going like how you used to see them go to these other countries, and they're starting to get a lot of likes, mm-hmm. just like a big burst. You don't see that anymore. Which I am getting followers, not a whole lot, but it's building it slow. Uh, lives, I like the lives because you get better interaction with uh, people in the woodworking community. You get to see what they're doing. You bring them on, talk with them, you make good friends, and they get a chance to put out what they're doing. Uh, post, I don't hardly do any posts. Uh, I've done one, and it actually got quite a bit of engagement in it, to tell you the truth, but um, it's been more there, like the past month, it's been more focused on reels, but then again, I kind of slacked off because they're not really doing that much. And I've been doing a lot of lives and I, I think that's kind of where I'm going to go with it for now. And I'll put reels out as I get the content to do it. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. I, I really like doing the lives and bringing people on and talking with them and, you know, just talking shop. Yeah. I, I think in Instagram right now, it doesn't really know where it wants to go. It obviously wants to go down the real uh, path. Uh, they kind of want to compete with uh, TikTok, but uh, I they they realized their mistake when they went you know all reels hardcore and um, that's pretty much only kind of viewing you'd get. Um, I'm curious what they're gonna because it, it, it goes back and forth. It used to be posts and then it was uh, reels and then you know maybe for a while there was lives. You never really know. Um, I think, you know, you said it great and we said it in the past. Do you. If you're having fun doing it and you're posting the content you want to, you know, you'll you'll hit off, you'll get the ones and two followers, maybe more, and you're slowly going to grow. You'll get your name up. Um, I, I totally agree. I mean, it, it, it got to the point where it was like, I got in that groove where I was like, you know, getting home and I'm like, I got to do something to try to put a reel out. Mm-hmm. And then it just got to where it was a pain and I wasn't having fun. And it's, you know, trying to put, I'm trying to run YouTube, Facebook and Instagram. And it just got to where it's like, yeah, uh, it's beginning to be a real unlike job that I'm coming home, trying to put something out just to put something out. And that's when I just like, pulled the reins back and said, yeah, I'm not going to do that. And just once I get the footage, I'll put, I'll put a reel out when I'm able to. And, and, you know, they, you hear a lot of things that are saying, well, you need to, you need to be consistent. You need to put something out every day. You need to put, and it's like, yeah, for the person that's doing this full time, it's not a problem. But when you have a job, that's pretty tough to do. You know, it's, it's pretty tough because, uh, I find myself 
not being able to be around the family because I'm stuck in here trying to do something or trying to get something out. And it's like, it, it almost gets to a point where I just don't want to come out here and I don't want that to happen because I love doing it and I don't want it to get that way where I'm dreading having to come out here because I'm needing to put something out. If you know what I mean? No, oh, absolutely. I think we all been there so, at one point in time. I'm there right now. I'm not trying to burn it like six different ends to get a, an Instagram reel out right now. I've been doing them just like literally whenever I felt like doing something like randomly the other night posting that, that uh, beans video. Most people probably wonder like what and what is going on here. I was literally so we just got done eating food at the neighbor's house, having game night, whatever. Wife had to we had to spread masa and tamales, and we had to clean beans for refried beans the next day. I was maybe two sheets to the wind, <laughs> counting beans, taking a video, and posting a reel, and then freaking becoming a tamale or masa spreading champion. Okay, with a masa spreader, I'm over here just like doing this whole thing, and now that was when I posted my reel. So. I'm just posting whatever the heck I feel like. And honestly, if people like it, cool. If they don't, well, kick rocks. Or beans. I will tell you. Or beans, yeah. Yeah. But Joey sure knew what I was doing because he commented. He said, oh, I know what you're doing. I was like, yeah. Right away. I knew. I had no I was idea. like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I had no idea. I'm not going to lie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you got to go through them because you don't want to leave. Because sometimes there's rocks in there and then there's rotted beans got to separate that all out so somebody some my wife missed one one time uh she didn't clean them correctly <laughs> and uh my brother-in-law bit down and uh chipped the tooth Ow. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you got to make sure you yeah, clean them right fired yeah <laughs> what are you what, what are you counting beans for it's for refry beans so like you know you get the ones in the can right but like if you take actual you know like dried beans you pour a little bag on the table. You go through and pick all the rotten beans, the rocks, as he says, because so, there is actually sometimes rocks in it. And then, like, just random, like, half. Like, I don't. we don't do half beans. I don't know. It's just a thing. So, and then you soak them, and then you cook them, mash them, put the uh, the lard, if you will, and uh, a little bit of bacon grease, you know? Yeah, it's pretty good. Oh, yeah. That's how you make uh, good grease, refried beans. Sounds like you're adding an extra step there. No, just, absolutely not. Just fry them <laughs> once, and they're good, right? No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. You gotta fry them twice. You gotta, you gotta refry them, refry them with some bacon grease. That yeah. is the ultimate. That's like the mm. best. Welcome to a new podcast, Joey's Trust. Cooking Show, where we go through. <laughs> Hey, the people want new content, they get food content now. Hey, let's go. If you cook food, you're a maker. <laughs> you're not wrong. I was yeah. asked to go on a on a deal, but it just I wasn't I just they asked me to go on um I think it finally ended, but it was uh Patsy with Dobbs. Oh man, I'm gonna murder her deal. She's gonna kill me. But they had a, a show that you'd go on, makers would go on and cook. <laughs> And I was talking about making fajitas one time, and they're like, "Oh my God, you got to come on there and and cook those." And I'm like, "I I just never had it's time to do that uh, show." But yeah, <laughs> Went from woodworking to making food. Nothing wrong with that. Well, well rounded, man. We do a little bit over here, a little bit of everything at Steel Blade. Oh, yeah. You know. So, let's go to Christmas. I, I've been chopping out the bit to hear what you guys got. Anything for the shop and whatnot, starting with Joey. Let's, uh, let's see what you got uh, for Christmas, and then uh, we'll start doing uh, shop talk. And at the tail end of ours, we can share what we got for Christmas as well. Well, I'll touch on two of them. One, one you've seen was the camera. So, one of my things that I've wanted to try to do is, is get a little better on video. And um, I ended up getting this camera set up with the monitor. And that thing is freaking cool. That was, uh, this was, this whole rig set up was designed in, in, uh, by Paul from 1116th Woodworks. And he gave me pretty much everything to buy. This is kind of what he's building the same rig. So um, I got this for 
videoing. And another thing that I got was uh, I've been wanting to get this for the miter saw. And it is the recon. Oh, I have one of those. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Measuring gauge. It's awesome. How, how do does you, that work, boys? Well, and how does it work, Josh? Because I want one, but I'm afraid to get one. It w- it works good. Um, there's a limitation on like uh, thickness of wood, um, but if you're doing a lot of like small cuts or like, and that ends this what segment. Going that? into our next segment. That's my printer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like it's definitely nice to have. I got that to put on the. I got the K pick, so that's where that's gonna end up living on. Uh, that was. I guess some of the bigger shop tools that I got this year. Nice. So I, I got into the, I haven't used it. You you set up zero and you set it up and then I did a test cut and yeah, repeatable. I did uh, you know, I did three inch cut, t- tested it, three inch cut, tested it. All came out the same. As long as you don't move it, you're fine. I haven't used it yet. So once I, once I get a little more, once I get that saw set up and put it on there, then I'll, I'll give some good feedback on it and know if it's uh, it takes uh, accurate and takes in consideration the curve of the blade, everything. So it's definitely worthwhile. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm excited to get it put on there and get that. I want to use that saw. I haven't used it yet, so we're gonna try it out, see what happens. So yeah, that was uh, you know one of the other things I've incorporated Festool into the shop now, uh, even though I said for years i wouldn't buy that stuff and i remember the sand well, river deal. clearly the better brand so kind of got, <laughs> yeah, kind of gone who, down a rabbit hole with festool here lately who who was that on the on the podcast or on your live that was arguing with us that was i think uh well there was a few of them there's scott from red leg woodworks and i think chris from veteran son woodworks if i'm not mistaken um they were we were talking having the uh conversation about the festival domino and oh yeah, yeah boy that sparked some that sparked some good conversation if you should say yeah there's a there's a lot of debate over that People love their tools brands, man. They get behind them and they are loyal. Well, you, you know, I, I was always one of the ones like that's, I'll never buy that expensive stuff till I did one of my last projects when I did that resin inlay and that countertop for that last build I did in the shop. And I was there sanding for hours upon hours with the big box store sander and hundred degree temps. It wasn't fun. Let's just say there was a few choice words set out there, and that's when I decided that I needed to get better sanders. Yeah, once you're doing bigger projects, and sometimes it's worth having a quality tool. I'll never regret buying, you know, the Merca sander or the Festool like shop uh, dust dust extractor. <clears throat> never regret it. Every time I use it, I, I smile a little bit inside and go on sanding. I mean, and that that's why deal started with the Festool sander. And then from there, it kind of exploded, and I added more stuff. <laughs> That's how it starts, man. So, yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, it's all – it's it's very nice stuff. I mean, I can tell you what, just sanding with the sanders, there's no vibration. My hands don't get – don't fall asleep like they were with those other ones. And it's actually pretty pretty nice to sand with those sanders. I'll tell you what, it's a – big difference and and using the domino i i made a frame the other day and i was like wow that joint was the easiest miter joint i ever put together you know i was like why why did i wait so long yeah i'm biting the to buy that i want to bite the bullet to get one of those especially like uh some of the projects i'm up and coming and the ones i've been working on would definitely be worth it I saw that and I saw the yeah. the um, joint that you did. And I'm like, man, every time I see one, I'm like, I need one so bad. Just it's hard to justify when you don't need it. And then when you need it, it's too late. Hell, it made me look like a pro. I was even amazed by it. I was even amazed by myself. <laughs> I put it together. I was like, wow. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. 
It's nice. Or have it and not need it, then need it and not have it. A great man said that once. Who said that? Robert D. Gaylor. <laughs> oh, he said that? I... He did, yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> that sounds like you got a pretty good Christmas going on over there with uh, some of the stuff you talked about. Um, you know, Santa Claus was good to you. I'm not going to complain. <laughs> it was nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean... Of course, my wife doesn't doesn't care or like it, but you know, we, I think we I do all battle that's all that. that counts. I think that's a battle we all do. <laughs> I know when uh, I think Nap got his, he was questioning about getting a nice sander, and then he finally got one, and he enjoyed it or does enjoy it now. I mean, it was the same way. Talk about Nap, man. What's going on in your shop? What did Santa Claus get to you, and how are things been going? Well, I can tell you this: Santa Claus didn't get me. Sh- Cool. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, to be fair, boys, um, it's funny. I, I've seen stuff about this all the time, and I'll just say Santa got me all the things I wanted throughout the year, so I really didn't need to get anything right now. Um, and we'll just say with moving, and we'll say me being the only one that's working right now, Santa, Santa was a little light this year, and that's fine. We took care of the boy, I took care of her, that's all that mattered. So I uh, just made the shop the best I could with what I had. Um, fixed some things up. I mean, if you want to say what Santa did for me, I mean, I did put my 2.2 spindle, uh, kilowatt spindle on my uh, CNC that I got a little while back from Daniel. And uh, I hooked up the IoT power supply. So my so short of an auto tool changer, my CNC is fully autonomous. As soon as I push start, vacuum turns on, spindle goes and does its thing. Uh, the only real thing I have to do is my touch off because if the touch off was automatic, that'd be just freaking outstanding. That would be what the ATC would be for, uh, and, uh, and having an actual touch off button. But other than that, I look at it, do my thing. It takes me five minutes to set up a job. I push start, vacuum turns on, spindle does its thing. As soon as the vacuum turns off, spindle's off, and I know my job is done. So it's pretty cool that I can just do all that with uh, a hobby CNC. I have a lot of cable management to bundle up, though, to make that a little more uh, nice looking. I set it up in a hurry because I kind of need to get some jobs done. Uh, and on those jobs, uh, I talked about it reluctantly in the last podcast. I took more of those two baby shadow boxes. And wouldn't you know it, I think I'm going for a record on how many times I can, can mess this thing up. Because I'm telling you, I see the first one, because I was trying to make it better than the last ones, because naturally that's what we do. And I was like, you know what? I really didn't like the edges on this, so I'm going to try to do a round over on the exposed edges below the stripes. Well, you do that by having a bearing on your you know, round over bit. You do the whole thing or whatever. Well, when you set the bearing a little too high or something dips and something goes wrong, well, you wouldn't you know it, it just does a really, really bad thing. It leaves a huge ledge and it looks stupid. So I tried sanding the one and, uh, well, it didn't work out very well. And the second one, when I went to redo it, I put the thing on a spot on my joiner that I didn't think I was going to walk by anytime soon. And damn it, wouldn't you know it, I bumped into some bitch and hit the ground and broke. I was like, God, mother. It was bad. It was totally bad. And then I get to the third. I'm on the third retry, right? Yeah, I'm on the third retry. So the third retry is another piece of scrap wood that I have in the garage. So let's hope I don't break that one so I don't got to go buy any more damn material. Um. But I was making the frame before I came in here for one of them. Uh, I should I didn't take the measurements down like I should have, but I have it programmed in my Vectric because Vectric is very good for programming and designing and all those things. Uh, so I have the measurements on that, but I don't remember which angles they were, like which ones were the 45s, which ones were the 90s to mate everything up and do all the things to make the box work. So I'm kind of re-figuring that out, but it took me maybe another 10 minutes more than it would have if I would have had it written down. Um, and then I made four more of those CE plaques. They're over here. I'm just going to do the thing real quick. They're over there hanging out on the table. Um, those are becoming a hot commodity. Honestly, they're already telling me, Hey, we want five more later down the road. We just don't have the funds for it. So I'll be making five more of them things probably in the next couple months, uh, which is pretty awesome. I'm waiting for 10 metal logos from, uh, uh, Drew, from was a Drew Clark over a metal tuition. Um, He's uh, finishing them up for me, powder coating them black, and he's going to send those my way. So I have some metal versions, because don't get me wrong, acrylic's cool, 
Um, but for this particular thing, if someone bumps this because of how fragile the edges are a little bit, they're going to stay, they could snap. And I let the customer know those. Like, yeah, it looks really nice. But if they bump this one good time, it's going to snap that thing right off. So just keep that in mind. Uh, and how that can go with, with thinner metals as well. But thinner metals are just a tad bit more resilient than acrylic. Um, so we got those. I'm going to have them pick those up probably tomorrow so I can get them out of here. So my cats don't like jump on the table or something and break one because that would suck. Uh, two shadow boxes, bigger shadow boxes. Finally, one of them's in work. I'm in the designing phase. Um, Josh actually hooked it up, sent me uh, two files, uh, which Josh, thank you. However, comma, uh, I was like, yeah, this these are really cool and these would work. But damn, I don't want to. I, I don't want to. I just don't. So I asked the guy, I was like, hey, uh, would you mind me doing silhouettes by chance? Because silhouettes, you can tell a KC-10 and a KC-135 apart even by silhouette. Because one has a big ass engine in the top portion of the vert vertical stab, right? Uh, I can't remember anymore. Vertical stab. And the other one does not. So there you have it. As long as they, one of them looks different and one's on the left, one's on the right, and they're flying upwards looking like a like it's coming up to a point. One has four engines. We're good to one go. has three. One has the engine. Yeah. So – yeah, there's, there's a whole bunch. There's so there's differences, and and the silhouette you can tell. <sighs> you can label um, underneath. Just have, use the same silhouette and then no. label underneath. <laughs> <laughs> I think he'd be like, "What the hell, dude?" He would he would say that to me. Um, but I so I got that, but it's out of all oak. Um, funny thing, when you're on a little bit of a budget, you know, staining oak is is cheaper. It just is. Um, so I told him, "Yeah, man, I'll stain. I'll do some oak for you, stain it for you, and all that good stuff." Uh, but after doing that last 3D shadow box staining it, I'm actually not too afraid to stain woods anymore. It's actually really not that bad. Uh, I've actually dreaded it at one point, and after the few times I've done it, it's actually not something I dread. So I actually fully accept staining woods now. Uh, but on that, with the wood thing, so I'm done with like what's actually going on in the shop as far as the projects. But wood, I'm not buying any more walnut because I hardly use it. Um, and I use it more for accents. I just do. I don't make anything big with the walnut stuff anymore, unfortunately, because it's just too damn expensive. Uh, so I've been running out of cherry like crazy. So I think what's going to happen is, is recently I got rid of a refrigerator out of my storage unit. I'm actually going to go buy a hundred board feet of cherry and I'm going to store it in there and replenish my stock. So I don't have to keep replacing cherry quite as often. Um, I still have the maple that I bought from the first time I got here. I'll probably won't buy any more maple. <laughs> I no one, no one wants that stuff. They want cherry or Oak. That, that is, that is the woods here. And honestly, I'm okay with that because my bottom line is less affected if I'm using that stuff versus if it's like, oh, I want a full walnut something. Um, because, yeah, that they're not going to pay for that. I just, I, I know they're not. Um, but other than that, that's really what's going on. Um, yeah. Nothing really else to talk about over here. How about you, Nick? What you got going on, man? Uh, well, so um, my son... Well, so my wife hid my gifts in my son's closet for Christmas from from the gifts for me because she knows I would never go in there. But uh, there were there was two of the uh, Lowe's style like uh, shop stools. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so my son, my wife left for work one day. This is probably like a week before Christmas. And my son was like, Dad, I need you to come upstairs. I, I found something. I'm like, okay, what's up? And he's five. And he's like, do you think Santa came early and left this for me? Because he didn't know what they were. And the boxes were colorful. And I was like, oh, well, I don't think Santa brought those for you, buddy. I think Mommy got those for Dad. But uh, And he's like, oh. Well, no, 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 it can't be possible. It's got to be from Santa. And he was like, uh, I'm like, please don't open that. You know, don't open it. I just, so anyway, I, I told my wife about it and she was, she was super pissed because he's <laughs> renowned for, like, renowned for ruining surprises like that and not even doing it on purpose. And uh, so I go up there yesterday to get one of them because they didn't, they weren't even put out for Christmas because I knew about them. And uh, and I go in the closet to get one, and one of them, all, like, the box is shredded. All the pieces are out. The hardware's everywhere. Uh, there's 
stool components all over the, to, to the closet. I'm like, son of a gun. Well, I guess I found which one I'm going to put together first. So, <laughs> so I got that. I got those for Christmas, uh, which is pretty cool. I used, I used one today. Um, if you don't have those stools, they're pretty comfortable, especially if you're sitting down in the shop standing and stuff like that. And then, It is um, a game changer, honestly. Stools are a game changer. And my, my brother ended up, he got me a, um, a new apron from um, Duluth Trading Company. Ooh, that's a good, so, that's good. Yeah. So I have that in the shop as well. And uh, yeah, man, I've just been trying to keep up with uh, the orders that I already had. I haven't gotten any new ones in the past couple of days, but I'm just uh, trying to maintain my timeline. All right, what about you, Josh? What'd you... What did you get for Christmas this year? Anything for the shop? Did you get a lot of wood? A lot of hardwood? Hard things with hard men? Hardwood? Did you get any hair yet? No? <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh. I think Josh is having issues, boys. I don't think he can hear us. It's, it's not working. Oh, no. Today's the day. I throw my computer. <laughs> Sorry about the technical difficulties. My headphones decided to connect to the upstairs TV. So I was hearing whatever my wife was watching, and which was nothing bad. It was static <laughs> because she just turned it on. And then I couldn't hear you guys, and I couldn't get connected, and it's just moving on. So I, was, I didn't get much shop stuff for Christmas. Um, my wife said that she wanted to give me some other stuff. So I got some um, – it's a flashlight that goes around your neck. And you can pivot it, and you're able to hands free actually see what you're doing. Um, and then I got gloves with flashlights on, so you can actually be working on something, and you just point your finger at it, and um, you're able to see that. I got a new bra and shaver. Jesus, <laughs> some- I'm sorry, Josh. My my headphones connected to your upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's in the chat, so I'll be careful. <laughs> Hey, that's Matilda. a good movie, by the way. Matilda is a good movie. Anyway, the new sorry. one. She wants to watch the new one. She's been trying to. Um, but uh, yeah, I got some pretty good stuff. But the flashlight stuff is pretty cool. Plugins or anything. Got some other pretty cool things to go along with that. But those are the big hitting things at the moment. Um, I was supposed to finish that trunk before Christmas. Unfortunately, I had to get the materials from the client. So it's just kind of, I'm kind of waiting. Um, I want to put uniforms into the lid. And in order to do that, I need to do some measurements and stuff like that before I actually attach the final uh, panel. So I am waiting on the uniforms. So I'm kind of hold there. I did complete some signs, um, some surveillance signs. I did three of those. Um, that was a pretty easy uh, carve on the CNC. And then, uh, you know, painted the letters and I sprayed them with some Halcyon because they're going to be outside and basically, uh, that was a last minute project. I did that um, coin holder too, knocked that out, gave it to the client. Um, it's going to hold about 81 coins, 81, depending on the size. Um, I did uh, two inch to two and a half inch size coins for the measurements. I figure that's about the average. Um, so, yeah, it should be about 81 coins. And then um, shop is absolutely a disaster, uh, basically. Once those signs were done, which I couldn't spray outside because it was 14 degrees, um, I had to spray them inside. So I got my pop up shelter. Oh, it would have dried so faster. I could, not at 14 degrees. Yeah, it just freeze. Crystallized. Same thing. <laughs> same, same. So I, uh, I had a pop up uh, spray shelter and uh, sprayed it in there. And then I threw the heater on, let them dry, did a couple coats of that. Uh, they they seemed to like them. I'm waiting on my client to pay from Alaska. I'll be doing a shadow box uh, in March for them. I have a shadow box doing in January coming up here uh, in Georgia. Um, I have a, um, a liquor box due at the end of January, a plaque from the New Jersey State Police here to the California uh, Police Department. Uh, apparently there was an incident and uh, they were, they want to do a plaque for them. Uh, so a lot going on in the shop. I have things scheduled out pretty far out, uh, which I don't mind. Um, it's nice to have a schedule like that. Um, that way, you know, I know what's kind of coming. Currently looking for a new job within the Air Force. 
So that might be putting a couple wrenches in the plans later on in the year um, where I won't be able to be in the shop, but I can always take my podcast equipment with me so I can do the pod where I'll be at. But um, yeah, so some changes coming up, um, some things scheduled out, some awesome Christmas gifts between Santa, my wife and my kids. I am entirely grateful for the stuff I got. And, uh, you know, I, I think I did good this year. I can't complain. Let's quickly go through what we'd like to see uh, our shops do in the next year. And then uh, for us three, we tell everyone where we kind of want the podcast to be next year. So starting with Joey, what's uh, 2023 hold for Steel Blade Woodworks? I want to get my website going. That's one of the main deals where I can get some of this stuff out for other woodworkers and uh, start offering some of my products that I do make here in the office uh, and concentrate also at getting my shop finished to where I can start utilizing all my tools and start putting out more content of actually building wood stuff instead of just all laser 3D printed things, you know? So that's what I'm wanting to try to accomplish in 2020. No, yep. Um, short and skinny of it is, is one, because I finally am almost caught up on jobs. You get this damn Etsy going again, again, I guess <sighs> it, it'll happen. It'll happen. I promise. But that's kind of lowest on the priority list, but I do want to actually start doing more traditional woodworking in some at for certain things, uh, starting to learn some different stuff because, uh, I want to, um, help the podcast a little more. I mean, we do talk laser CNC and 3d printing a lot, but we don't really talk a lot of hand tool woodworking type stuff, like traditional stuff. Uh, So maybe start working a little more into that to one expand uh, my knowledge, but also maybe expand to some listener knowledge, maybe uh, open a a new Avenue for the podcast that way. Um, And honestly survive my first winter here and finish the shop up. Uh, in the spring, because the spring I'll be able to actually, you know, open the garage back up, pull everything out, finish doing everything I want to do to it, and then put everything back in. So that's where I want to see the shop go, I guess. Yeah. Nick? Well, I want some freaking air conditioning. (laughs) Uh, Other than that, uh, I'd like to start taking just larger jobs instead of onesie twosie little things last minute here and there um i'm talking large jobs as in volume so i have uh i can start charging appropriately for like wholesale stuff or even you know at at volume costs for organizations and such i like to do some larger signs and yeah still want to make shadow boxes i still want to fulfill my etsy but I just kind of want to have more of a forecast. That's all I got. All right, Josh. Well, personally, um, this next year is going to be kind of, I don't know where I'm going to be. We're going to make uh, these goals pretty simple. Regardless of where I end up or what happens, I, I want to make sure that, uh, you know, the family's set up, you know, focus on the job and uh, make sure we can still produce some stuff out of the shop. So I'll probably be doing, uh, you know, something similar to what nab has done but you know what life's an adventure especially when I'll you're see in, you in seven months homie so i am not going up there <laughs> nope hell no <laughs> <laughs> so. no nope. joey's like he's laughing he's like you say that but why i voted so in there. the dakotas i've already done my time it doesn't the matter dakotas. the air force has a cold. cool sense of humor my friend nope <laughs> shared mm-hmm. shop peters Nope, nope, nope. I'll come nope. warm yours up if you come warm mine up. Oh. It's going to be different, but uh, like I said, it's a new adventure. So we'll see how that works out. Question from the chat. Mm. Are you going to get that CNC up and running? Eventually. Eventually. Anyway. I may just have to take some time and just go over there and get it for the get it going for the lad. I come home from work one day and I see it on a trailer being driven away. <laughs> I'm like, damn it, Joey, you got me. Well, you wanted to see him. <laughs> you see him <Yeah>. leave. <laughs> and you wanted to see I, it running. So, I mean, 
I'll go crack the whip over there at MPG Creations and we'll get that thing rolling. Before we get into our sponsors, I do want to do uh, the goal for the podcast. So just one goal from all three of us, and then we'll roll into our sponsor. One of the goals I like to see, obviously, is get, uh, you know, more listeners, branch out a little bit more, going out there and just, you know, trying to help people out. I mean, I think we've been doing a pretty good job about doing that and reaching out to people and helping. Um, but, you know, you can always do more. So, well, you nap. What do you think we should have as another goal for the pod? Expand our knowledge base. Definitely one. Honestly, that's that's why I'm going to be getting into the, the more of the hand tool stuff. Uh, not Not because, you know we need that for the podcast one it's more of a goal for myself but i think if we're able to bring more aspects of woodworking or even just making in general i think that'll help broaden our listener base a little bit so i think that that would be nice but also having a maybe even more structured approach maybe like picking a type of job that we do and breaking it down to its smaller details on how we do certain things tips tricks and those and sorts of things um, I don't know, make some instructional podcast episodes, something like that. I don't know. We'll, we'll talk more on it. It's just some ideas have been spitballing uh, me, between me and another maker. Uh, we were just chatting about it and came up. Uh, and then also we're going to that conference too. So we'll see what uh, work, or Workbench Con uh, has in store for us this year. So we'll see. What about you, Nick? Well, like always, take care of yourselves. No, I'm fine. <laughs> so, I, uh, I, I like to see, I like to see makers come on who don't typically do the same style stuff we do. And I know mm-hmm. we've had, um, um, uh, what is it? Uh, Eric Pennington from Wood Raven. Yeah, we Red, had the Red Raven Woodworker. We've had Red Raven on. We have had metal a metal worker on. I'd like to see more of that content because. It just opens up our knowledge base. It, it opens up our listener base, and it helps cross talk and networking. and And I think that uh, that will greatly benefit the podcast in the future. We have a lot of things we'd like to change and improve upon in the next uh, new year, twenty twenty three. And uh, if you have any ideas that you'd like to see for the podcast, let us know as always. But uh, with that, let's go ahead and hit our sponsors and wrap this up. All right, we'd like to thank Daniel from PWN CNC. Daniel over there is hard at work in his workshop, even though the elves up in the North Pole are taking a break. Daniel sure hasn't. So check him out, pwncnc.com. Use promo code SAWDUSTNATION981 for 10% off your entire order. And uh, again, I want to thank Total Boat for their continued support. If you want 10% off promo code to Total Boat, go ahead and shoot us a DM at Sawdust Nation Podcast on Instagram, and we'll hook you up. And I would love to thank our affiliates, Makerstock.com and Om Tech. So if you're looking for a laser, hit us up. We will help you figure out what fits you best. And lastly, thanks, patrons. You guys are rocking. I know we had – I don't know if we discussed this last time, but the toolbox we gave away before Christmas has arrived, and it's in place. That makes me happy. But uh, with that, I'm going to kick it over to Nat. Hey, check it out, folks. If you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, any of the podcast catchers, go give us five stars. Um, but if you don't, let us know why you didn't give us five stars. We give you the content you, that you just deserve. Uh, but as you heard, we're talking about things to improve the podcast. So, hey, even if you give us five stars, give us uh, some ideas to improve the podcast. I think we have some pretty good ideas, but, you know, that's what we think. We want to know what you think. Uh, so go ahead and hit us up. How are you going to get a hold of us there, Josh? they want to give us that information well first of all i want to thank joey for coming on and i want to ensure that anyone listening can get on his instagram or his um, youtube or his facebook and check him out and you can do that by going on instagram and searching joey steel blade steel blade woodworks is where he's at and he's making some great stuff and a pillar of the community if i if i could say so um, with that check him out like him follow him uh, if you want to go ahead and get a hold of us at the podcast, go ahead and do that on Instagram by clicking on or searching for the Saw Destination podcast. Uh, we should pop right up. Go ahead and follow us. Send us a message. Uh, we'd love to answer your questions. We'd love to talk shop, talk about topics you like to see in the podcast. Um, if you're not a social media fan, we do have our email account at SawDestinationPodcast at gmail.com. And you can do the same thing. Um, just a different way to reach out. 
With that, uh, if you'd like to reach us individually, you can go ahead and do that with Naps from Naps Naughty Works LLC, or Nick from MPG Creations, or myself, Josh, from North Country Woodworking. So, a lot of ways to reach out and kind of ask questions and you know be part of the podcast and the community we're trying to build. The best way, in my opinion, is to become a Patreon. We have great Patreons. Um, we have them in the chat. We have them on. Um, topic ideas, questions, <laughs> laughs, all had during the recording. So, you know, thank you to our Patreons. And uh, let's go with final words, starting off with Joey. I'd like to thank y'all for letting me or having me on again and wish everybody a happy new year and wish everybody have a great 2023 make some sawdust and yeah boom nailed it nap on slide in there no hey so like joey said so 2023 is fast approaching uh we all probably have a lot of goals so start planning those goals out i know some of us like to just jump off the deep end and just drown ourselves in these lofty goals that some of us may have but hey take it slow because a year is 365 days and guess what there's more years after that um, but as you do that, make sure you're taking care of each other and, uh, making sure the community keeps uh, growing because something that you're doing might be something someone else is doing. They might have questions and may reach out. So make sure uh, you guys are still taking care of each other while you're taking care of yourselves. So Nick, what you got? Me? All right, folks, like always take care of yourselves and each other. And remember the fastest way to become a millionaire is start off as a billionaire and start woodworking. That is some yes. solid advice right there. That's true. <laughs> so thank you, everyone, for joining us for the 131st episode of Sound Destination Podcast. Thank you, Joey, for jumping on and uh, chatting it up with us. Uh, we truly hope that you enjoyed this last year of the podcast. And, you know, you could turn on any episode you'd like while you're making that cup of coffee, about to celebrate the new year, or what have you. So happy new year from us at Sound Destination Podcast. Make sure you're making sawdust. And Sawdust Nation Podcast out. Out? We're doing that again? Is that a thing? Is it making a return? 2023? Sawdust Nation out? Yes. New, yep. new you, new podcast. Damn, you caught me oh. off guard with that. I thought we were ending. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what? Uh, you f- uh. <laughs> what? <laughs> I gotta talk again. <laughs> He's like, what was it? Uh, was it Bruce? Like, was it uh, Bruce Almighty? He was like, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. <laughs>